The other thing, of course, is the design of the creature itself. Mm. I think it was um, in the original one, uh, they, because they first had Jean Claude Van Damme playing the mm. playing the predator. The lobster suit. Yeah, <laughs> and the lobster suit didn't work, yeah. and it was it was supposed to be this more sort of lithe kind of cat-like creature, mm. I think. And then they realized they're not going to be able to work it because the prosthetics of that time were so clunky mm. that they wouldn't be able to do it anywhere. Mm. And, and apparently the, the suit was a whole mess. And then they brought in Stan Winston, who's mm. been responsible for like the alien and been responsible for like the Terminator. Yeah. And so, so he's, he's a real, real cra artist, yeah. craftsman artist, who's basically made up most of the iconic... Mm sci-fi boogeymen or, yeah. or beings that that we've seen in the past like maybe 40 years now yeah, yeah. Um, and and he came in and he, he had like seven weeks to put together the suit mm. and he gave it to one of a, a young guy called steve wang i think mm. who started to draw it out and they they did like they, they designed the hell out of it they mm. were doing like 40 hour days and, yeah. and, and, and painting it and thinking about it. And then James Cameron came in just to see uh, pictures of the creature. Mm. And he said, and this is one of the defining attributes of the creature. He said that he'd never seen uh, a, a creature who ha which had working mandibles. Mm. And Stan Winston thought, this is a great idea. How are we going to do this? Mm. Because already the, the the guy who was making the suit said that the the head was the head still too big if you mm. look at the predator's head compared to the rest of the well look at this i mean it's it's way yeah. too big for the for mm. the for True. the body and it was like one and a half times too big mm. and then they were trying to put in like i think it was electronically mm. controlled mandibles or something like that and they only had mechanical things and and the wang had said that screw it, I'm just going to build it and they're going to have to try and make it work. Mm. And he said that he was glad that he did it because it was going to be even, the, the head was going to be even bigger mm. if they were going to try and mold it around the original uh, mechanical parts yeah. that were going to control the mandibles. Mm. Now, the end result is beautiful. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a real, real feat. And, and they said that the guy who was playing it, Kevin Peter Hall, mm. when he was in the suit, there was like... No, Literally, there was there was nothing extra for the guy mm. to move around in. It was like millimeter. Uh, uh, there, there wasn't a single millimeter of space mm. extra inside the uh, the suit. So they had to cover him in like KY jelly mm. every morning so that they could just get on the suit. Yeah. And it was it was hot and it was completely um, like exactly made to measure mm. and and kevin peter hall is like seven foot tall or something mm. like that almost a six five six yeah. uh six uh nine or six ten or something like that and and there was it was still like completely form-fitted mm. so it's been a real real fluke in a way yeah. that they were able to do s sort of everything just sort of felt it mm. fell fell in place so that's a huge thing, obviously. Mm. The same thing with the alien, the yeah. same thing with Jaws. Yeah. Every time you have to get that creature exactly right, mm. because there's a lot of sci-fi movies where... And it, it always it just, ruins the movie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you think about... Like an obvious example is the alien... Um, is it Resurrection? Yeah. Where they had this like a really awful... They did. Alien. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> it's just, for me, it's sort of... It's sort of like a quirky movie, kind of funny sort of works but doesn't and then you have this shitty alien in it and it really just ruins the whole movie yeah. so you have to have a really good creature yeah. if you're going to do something like that and it, i mean predator predator and alien are basically the two best yeah. like this uh, i can't even think of the well, third one well the terminator is terminator, yeah, yeah, yeah. True, true yeah yeah um it's also interesting in how the whole thing started I read about this in, in Empire because it was these two brothers called John and Jim Thomas mm. who'd been writing sort of, oh, oh, I don't remember which one it was, maybe it was, well, one of them anyway, had written scripts before and they were both w 
working as beach lifeguards mm. in, in Hollywood. And one of them got hurt jumping out of the tower, like mm. in a pr proper Baywatch kind of thing, <laughs> to, trying to jump out of the yeah. tower. And I think he broke his ankle or, or his shin or something like that. So he was out of the job for a while. And they decided that they were going to write this script about this alien. And they thought about like sports hunters mm. who go to Africa to just hunt for big that game. That is a genius idea. Yeah. And have this like intergalactic hunter, mm. um, which was the name of the original script was, was the hunter. And, uh, and then they, um, then they tried to pedal it through they say that there's a myth going on around in Hollywood mm. that they were trying to pull push the script under people's doors, mm. and they say that that's a myth. But that's only because they didn't think of it. They were trying to push <laughs> it in every sort of direction, yeah. and and they say that it's it, it's a it's a real rarity because it was a script that was able to get into production within a year of it being written mm. without the aid of an agent. Okay. So they tried to peddle it themselves and they gave it to a guy who seemed a really sort of bottom feeder mm. Hollywood type yeah. who had a contact within Fox, uh, gave it to that contact within Fox and then Fox decided to let most of its people go, completely mm. restructure their sort of um, organization. Yeah. So the guy who got it at Fox read it and he'd liked it and he'd only left it He'd left it behind because he was, he was one of the guys who was sacked. Mm. He just left it on his desk with a note, post-it note on top of it says, it's saying, read this. Mm. And it was picked up by one of the new junior execs who came into the, mm. country, uh, in, into the company, a real hungry, you know, wanting to make a first impression. Mm. And he read it and he liked it. And it was his first picture within Fox. So it was a complete sort of fluke that the whole yeah. script got into production. Then, of course, there, were, there was rewrites. They, they said when it went into development, that created, they sort of sacked the Thomases mm. and they brought in David Webb people who'd written Blade Runner mm. to rewrite it. Uh, and they rewrote it. And then it was supposed to be uh, directed by a guy called Jeff Murphy, who was a New Zealand director mm. um, who'd made a, an impact in Hollywood. But unfortunately, when Conan the Barbarian came out, he'd referred to it in his New Zealand way as Conan the, Conan the Librarian. <laughs> and Schwarzenegger didn't like it at all, so he got sacked. You don't say <laughs> that. You just don't. <laughs> no. uh, and they brought in John McTiernan, mm. who wanted to rework the script completely. Yeah. And then they, they hired Web Peoples, and then they said to the Thomases goodbye. And then a month later, or uh, a period of time later, the studio said that they hate the rewrite mm. and they wanted to bring Jim and John back. Mm. And then it got up from there. Yeah. Um, so like, I think, like anything in Hollywood, it's a combination of luck and it's a combination of being at the right, right time, yeah. the right place meeting the right people and so on. Any movie, I think, goes mm. through this kind of thing. Yeah. But this has been a, an especially yeah. sort of crooked and weird kind of journey for it to actually be made. Um, and I think, I think stories like that are interesting, but they don't really illuminate the fact and why that specific thing worked mm. in that specific time. Uh, I'm sure Schwarzenegger ha has a huge amount to do with it. I'm yeah. sure that John McTiernan, who was a really, really, mm. really good director before he went to jail. <laughs> He's in jail? <laughs> I think he went to jail for like tax fraud or something like that. But he made, I mean, he made Die Hard and yeah. he, made, he made Predator and he made uh, uh, Hunt for Red October mm. and a lot of these sort of classic 80s movies that, that, that really worked. And mm. that he had that knack of making a script work yeah. uh, sort of seamlessly from beginning mm. to end. Because um, like in, similarly like to in, in Die Hard, there really isn't a dead dull moment in Predator. No. It just, it, it goes yeah. 
com constantly goes on like a train mm. and you don't get this sort of weird weird tonality shifts or shifts mm. in pace like you have with the predator yeah you do yeah uh, that it just doesn't you know mm. it just doesn't gel it's sort of a coherent whole yeah and it's really a genius idea the intergalactic hunter when you think about it i mean it is uh, and i and that's the thing that because some ideas are are sort of um, you can milk them for longer but then again, it's, it, it's a genius idea, but it is a rather simple idea also. Yeah, and, and, st and stupid, yeah, in a way. In a way, yeah. Yeah. But it, it, it is, it's interesting also that, that, like, the Thomases said that they, when they started to pedal out the script, they had over a hundred rejection letters mm. from different studios because they were going to do it themselves and yeah. they didn't have money to get an agent mm. and so on. Um, so... To think that something like this goes through a th hundred rejections and then it becomes sort of one of the sort of iconic it is staples really iconic, of, yeah. of 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 sci-fi. Yeah. It's it, it kind it, of there's not maybe not the best best people out there spotting the scripts. I mean, really, when you yeah. think about it. Yeah. Cause yeah, because there's mu there must be loads of really good stuff just no. seeping through the cracks. No. Um, and I guess that's the, that's the time we live in.